Happy mid-morning, guys. <clears throat> All right, so it's Tuesday, if you think it's a Friday. But, uh, yeah, uh, analytics, analysis, something that I think I'm pretty good at, putting puzzle pieces together. Now, hopefully a bunch of you guys watched my morning video and I explained what was going on with that. Uh, after watching that, a few of you guys made some comments and some other stuff that's come out in the news and the way the calendar reads and things like that all don't look good. I, I don't care if you say I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here, okay? Uh, but this is all starting to really line up quickly, right? So I'm not going to rehash what I talked about this morning because that's certainly something of concern. <clears throat> but... Let's take a look at what else is going on and try to work it all together. So today's the 23rd of May, Tuesday. We are supposed to hit the debt ceiling on June 1st, which is nine days away. Does anybody realize that the Senate goes on recess today? Okay? They're taking the rest of this week off through Memorial Day next Monday. Okay, The House of Representatives is taking recess starting next Tuesday and taking all of next week off. And we got this debt ceiling looming. Now, there's nothing to say that Chuck Schumer can't call back an emergency session of the Senate or Kevin McCarthy can't call back an emergency session of the House. However, it's not like this is Star Trek and we can go, Scotty, beam me up. I'm going to be there. <clears throat> Catching planes from... California, Washington, Alaska, you know, Hawaii, pick something, takes a little bit of time to fly back to Washington. So I want you, I want you to, first off, we're going to start here. First off, understand this. Today, the 23rd, is the deadline for Biden and McCarthy to come up with a agreement for the debt ceiling. No, we don't run out of money till nine days from now, right? Okay, I want you to look at the calendar in this one. First off, if Biden and McCarthy come up with the debt ceiling, and of course Chuck Schumer agrees too, okay, it will take about two days to write up the bill, okay? Whole nine yards. So if they did it today, that means it would be Thursday before the bill is written. Kevin McCarthy has already said, and you guys remember him in his confirmation hearing to be, or confirmation votes to be the Speaker of the House. One of the things that they, that those 20 some odd uh, representatives were adamant about was 72 hours to read a bill. Okay. McCarthy has says, said, under no circumstances will he not give members of the House 72 hours to read whatever's written. So if the bill's written, and it's presented on Thursday, that would mean Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, Again, with everybody out on Memorial Day weekend. <clears throat> Monday, of course, is a holiday. Okay, So that would bring it to Tuesday. Now, you're betting that if they go by bi calendar business days, not even including the holiday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday being the holiday. Let's say they get the vote in on Wednesday. Thursday's the first. Today is the deadline. If not today, it better be damn early tomorrow morning. Okay, so there's the first part. What is that going to do to the economy? Okay, this is how we go into this further. Well, let's take a look at what would happen if we do default. And there's more to this than just economics, guys. So bear with me on this, please. If there's any video you watch to the end, watch this one. Okay. If we default, you can certainly see Social Security, Medicare, food stamps, everything like that, miss payments. All right. It's not like you won't get it in arrears. You just won't get it now. The government spends something like a hundred and or I'm sorry, sixteen billion dollars a day. <clears throat> That's how it averages out in 
Medicare, Social Security, food stamps, whatever, government programs, okay? Take $16 billion out of the economy every day. Those people that don't get their Social Security check can't pay their rent. That landowner, the property owner, he's got bills to pay too. So it's a snowball effect, okay? So first up, $16 billion comes out of the economy every freaking day. Borrowing costs, businesses, you, whatever, going to sort. Don't have to tell you about mortgage rates that are pushing 7% again, okay? A uh, friend of mine's daughter was approved for a $225,000 mortgage, okay, for the bank, pre-approval, okay? First off, it was next to impossible for her to find something in that price range, okay, even a condo. Uh, in Knoxville. Second off, the payments would have been somewhere around $2,500 a month. Remember me telling you guys January January 1st of 2020, uh, 2022, if you're going to buy a house, buy it now because this is what's coming. Bingo, here we are, okay? You know, what would have, what would have cost you $1,400 a month last year now cost you $2,500 a month this year for the exact same house extrapolate that out over 30 years, and you're paying an extra $360,000 to buy a house now. All in interest, okay? An extra $360,000 for a $225,000 house. Just telling you, okay? So yeah, you can forget about the housing market. The housing market gets trashed. Oh, let's talk about the stock market. Moody's says, gee, the stock market will probably crash 20%. Okay. <clears throat> Personally, I think if this happens, it's going to be more. You can imagine that all federal services are going to be shut down. I mean, everybody says, oh, gee, big deal. Grand Canyon shuts down or whatever it would be. Okay. There's a lot more to federal services than uh, just the parks, parks department, Department of Transportation, or I don't know, you know, highways, you know, you can have issues with that, court systems, yeah, things like that, okay? Oops, we got a problem, all right? The dollar will collapse <clears throat> because it's certainly going to lose lose its prestige, if you will. And I know everybody comes up and says, well, gee, that's exactly what the rest of the world wants, bricks and all this sort of stuff, okay? You know, they want to get away from the dollar. They want to have a, whatever you want to call that, communist cartel, uh, money, whatever it would be, red coin. Uh, yeah, don't count on it. China's economy in the toilet. They won't tell you this, but China is contracting like crazy. Uh, you can tell that by going and looking between the lines on a lot of the economic numbers that are coming out of China. Okay, The Chinese economy is in trouble. And don't think the Russian economy or the Brazilian economy or the South African economy is going to save the world. They ain't exactly running gangbusters at this point either. So you have that point. So the dollar collapses, which causes the rest of the world's currency to collapse. Gee, I don't know. Gold and silver happen to be on sale right now, guys. Just telling you. Okay. So that's not going to do any good. But if the dollar collapses, hmm, now what do you have? China, who's our number two creditor, remember telling us, wants their money. They need to, I mean, everything I told you a few days ago about China foreclosing on countries, okay, China is going to want their money from the U.S. They aren't going to say, oh, gee, you know what, we understand you're having problems right now. Pay us when you get around to it. It's not like they can, the U.S. government can tell Social Security recipients or the military, we'll pay you soon enough. China's going, no, now. We want our money, okay? Otherwise, there's consequences. Hmm. Yeah, elections have consequences there, Barry. Okay, we elected this moron. Ah, uh, no, we didn't, but okay, you selected this moron. Let me let me put it a little more accurately. So you get that, all right? So adding those two. I told you this morning about the set phones deal. Hmm, communication deal. Then I got some of your comments this morning, a couple of them, okay? 
Ron Jarman, if in case you didn't read the comments in this morning's video, Ron Jarman wrote, my hospital put out a request yesterday in our news center website asking for amateur ham radio operators to reach out to make a new unit to maintain continuity for emergency services. I'm at the Mayo Clinic. They definitely were warned about something. Yeah, I'd say the Mayo Qu Clinic looking for ham radio operators might have a little bit of cause for concern if senators are getting ham radios and suddenly communication is an issue. Oh, you want to throw another one? Uh, if I can read this, how about Tabray, right? Read this one. I work for the U.S. Postal Service. Government, okay. Two weeks ago, we were given a service talk about sheltering in place. During COVID, during anth anthrax, right after 9-11, we were told to get to work, no excuses. Even told us they'd have potassium iodide for us to take in the office in the event of a radio of radioactive fallout. You think if this doesn't collapse, okay, if this, if Biden doesn't back off from his clean bill, and says, we're just going to raise the debt limit, you're going to do it, okay? You think that might not piss off other people, other countries, other nuclear powers, okay? Other countries that don't like us, like the other 194 in the world, okay, that they may come screaming, yelling, and going, okay, we're, we're taking it from you either in dollars or in blood. Uh, yeah, somehow, some way, what's going to happen? Oh, maybe they don't attack Washington, D.C., but let's say they attack an embassy, a military installation, tourists, okay, churches, any sort of religious organization based out of the United States that's overseas, universities. Think about the exposure the U.S. has outside of the borders of the United States. Those are all targets. Okay. Now, what happens if some country decides to kidnap a bunch of missionaries, a bunch of embassy workers. Hmm, I don't know, Hillary might have something to know about that one. You know, don't worry about it. What's it matter anyway? Uh, what's going to be our response? Thank God Hillary's not president. Not that Joe's uh, got any sort of different plans than Hillary would. Screw it. You know, hell, I can leave $80 billion worth of <coughs> military equipment in Afghanistan. What do I care? This is it, guys. Okay. All the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fit together, are starting to fall into place. Today is it. Like I said, maybe tomorrow morning, okay? <clears throat> but everybody's on vacation, and it ain't going to be easy to get them back. Like I said, if it takes a day to get everybody back, all right, and then by the, bill, by the time the bill gets there, and by the time everybody reads it, and by the time they vote on it, we're at the deadline, okay? If the bills aren't paid on the 1st of June, like Janet Yellen keeps telling us we can't pay the bills on the 1st of June, which personally I find complete bullshit because the government takes in enough tax revenue every month, every month to pay the interest. They don't take enough tax revenue to pay off food stamps, welfare, Social Security, pay the military, got it out, give you that one, okay? But where's where's Joe's priority? Hey, we'll make we'll make sure we pay all the bills for the illegals in the hotels before we pay off the debtors that could nuke us. That's where we are, guys. <clears throat> okay. And if you think the government's coming to help you, <laughs> that ain't happening either. We're getting to a culmination of everything that we've talked about for years. Do you have your money safe? Is it in a bank? Okay. This goes down. All these stories that people are talking about that you're hearing on uh, some channels and alt media, which the alt media has a tendency to report pretty accurate stuff. Sometimes they're wrong. Okay. But what if, what if the government comes up and says, we're putting a restriction on your bank account and you can't take more than a hundred dollars out of your bank account every day or whatever figure do you have cash put away okay is your cash even going to be good in this scenario 
Does anybody want it? If the dollar collapses, what good's your cash? What do you have in an alternate currency? I go back to gold and silver, which is on sale right now. Okay. This, this is what you need to look at. Start putting it all together. If we don't pay the bills because Joe is too headstrong and arrogant to realize he's got to do what's best for the country and stop worrying about how, he, how he's going to jail, okay, that we wind up in a war, whatever the response is, like I said, they go into, you know, take out an embassy or something like that. You know, let's say China takes out the U.S. embassy, you know, in Beijing. You think that might not be an international incident <clears throat> that might cause some serious problems, okay? Yeah. Look, look what happens with smaller countries. Oh, I don't know, Afghanistan, Iran, or Iraq. Go back in history, Vietnam, Yemen, Somalia, whatever it would be. Yeah. Now let's play with China, who's got some big boomers. Watch this closely. Have your money put away. Have your preps put away. Have your freedom sticks cleaned, oiled, and polished, okay? Because <clears throat> not only is that going to cause chaos around the world, that's going to cause chaos in your neighborhood. Because now imagine when all the normies who are out there going, what do you mean I can't take more than $100 out of my account? Screw it. It's okay to steal as long as it's not $950. I'm taking it. Oh, I need gas. I'm going to siphon it out of your car. Oh, I need a car. I'm just going to steal yours. Oh, I need a place to live because rent's too expensive. I'm just taking this house. You think that's not realistic, guys? Wait. That's real realistic. That's exactly what's going to happen. All right? All we need is one thing. And communications, pop out communications. Just, I mean, this is what I'm saying. Take out the communications in the United States. Everything works on communications, okay? You can't go to the grocery store. Everything is internet connected. Take out the internet, poof, we're done. You can't get your money out of the bank, okay? The cash registers at the store don't work, so you're not going to be able to get anything. Take out the communications. Everybody says, take out the grid. If all of a sudden one day you wake up and you get a 404 error on every website, we got problems, okay? If you try to call your grand granddaughter in the next town over and say, hi, honey, I don't have internet, and the phone goes beep, 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 we got problems. And when they're talking about sat phones and ham radio and sheltering in place and all this sort of stuff, all at the same time, this doesn't happen because it's National Preparedness Month, whenever the hell that is, or some stupid idea there. This is going on because there's something going on. You know, somebody said on the video, oh, nothing will happen. Oh, the debt ceiling will get passed. Sure, I agree. That's a possibility. We're preppers. Do you prep for, I guarantee this is going to happen. No. You prep because this could happen. Right? The people that say, ah, nothing's going to happen, this is all BS, whatever it would be, have their head so far in the sand or up another orifice, you know, they aren't preppers. They're normies. They just pretend to be. I'm sorry. I don't pretend to be anything in my life. Pinball out.